It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Colts and the Bills, and it's coming up next. There's a look at Bills Stadium here in Orchard Park, New York. A few moments ago to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Garden alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Colts offense ready to go here for the first time and the former Philadelphia Eagle turned Indianapolis Colt Carson Wentz set to take over here at the controls in his first year in Indianapolis. And Carson Wentz made the move from Philadelphia to Indianapolis back in mid-February and although his last season is an Eagle not one that he wants to remember he's now reunited with his former offensive coordinator and current Colts head coach Frank Reich and gets to play behind one of the best offensive lines in football. A great place to resurrect his career. They'll run. This is Jonathan Taylor. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Throwing his wins. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 11 yards for number 11. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. On first and 10, here's Wentz. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. Seven yards to pick up there. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So if they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Second down and three. Wentz going to give this to Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. That's the type of run that Jonathan Taylor gives you so often, and you just can't take it for granted. He finds a way to get those extra yards. The third running back taken in the 2020 draft 
but he had the best numbers by far of any of them. 1,169 yards, third most in the NFL, and by the last quarter of the season, he ranked among the best runners in the league. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 48-yard line. Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. First and 10, Taylor now. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Throwing now is Wentz. And as he throws, he wants the football. It's loose. Wallace is picked up by the Bills. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. We see the Bills offense take the field here at quarterback Josh Allen. It's got to feel great for the Bills franchise to know that they're set up for the future with number 17 at the helm. They have to worry about draft choices. They have to worry about free agency. They have their quarterback. And the passing attack as a team, second only to the Chiefs in 2020. And how about Josh Allen? Guided the Bills to their first playoff win since 1995 last season. And his completion percentage in the last three years has gone from roughly 53% to 69% last season. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at the 34. Following the fumble recovery, Allen. Flushed out, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. You see me? You see me? They can't stop me out here. And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now. Still 15 yards to go, second down. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. Eluding the pressure right. And Allen will have the first down as he's able to slide to avoid the contact at the end. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. Allen now on first down. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, 
And then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And meanwhile, Allen's throw here pulled in by Beasley. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Six yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown on them. Look out. You've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. And the catch made, this is Emmanuel Sanders. And he is going to have a Bills first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. On play action, Allen. Looking for the end zone. And he's got his tight end, Knox, for a Bills touchdown. Dawson Knox, there to make the play out. As his guys are first up the scoreboard here this afternoon. That was a beautiful ball right there as he waited for his tight end to come up covered in the end zone to give him points for patience as well. Delivered it right where it needed to be for six points. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right now the extra point and it's seven nothing buffalo so that drive takes him down the field in eight plays and it culminates in a bills touchdown Touchdown Bass to kick it away. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And last time the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, 
Not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? On first down, Wentz looking deep for Hilton. And that is incomplete. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Wentz gonna throw. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's gotta have and a pass he should have caught. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. To throw is Wentz. This to Hines on the drop-off. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield, and he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. Play action. Now wins. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there. 26 yards. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 34. Again, it's Wentz. He'll check this down to Hines. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. So that, that was a very nice play, Charles, from a very speedy cornerback. And that is a situation where in the defender's mind, you just have to pick a point on the football field and think to yourself, I'm going to sprint full out and meet him at that point. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but he had to play diagnosed perfectly there. And the next-gen stats show us the top speed there, better than 18 miles an hour. <laughs> Naeem Hines, his first carry. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. Here's one out of the... They'll run here with Taylor. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the 6 to the 3-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Here's Taylor again. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down to Touchdown, Colts! Naeem Hines from three yards out. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. 
CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Michael Badgley on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Josh Allen leads the offense out for their next possession. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head, head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Going deep for Diggs. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Allen will try again on second down. Finding Knox there, complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Gain is seven and it gets him a new set of downs. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and ten. On first down, they stick with Singletary. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. you that coming up in two minutes time we'll hand you off to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action and that didn't fool anybody he's going to be dropped in the backfield now they're staring at a third and eight that last play backwards a yard when a draw works it can be a thing of beauty but when it does it oh it can be ugly and in this case loss of yardage ugly they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down Now 
Allen going to throw. And that is incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. On fourth down, on is the former Dolphin, Matt Hawk, to punt for Buffalo. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Fair catch, signaled for, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. Just a 25-yard punt, not what he was hoping for by any stretch. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. Escaping the pressure right. And Wentz going to slide to a stop. He does go, have the go. first down. Here we go. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's Wentz to throw. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Wentz. That's complete to his running back, Taylor. Now the Colts going to burn Let's the go, second go. of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Right there, right there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Wentz. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Three yards the gain there, second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run the ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. A great job defensively taking away his receivers. And he was forced to put that one into Lake Erie, but that's what good quarterbacks do. They don't take unnecessary chances if they don't have to. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Now Wentz again. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that is not an easy one to hold on to. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. The Bills offense now for one final time in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. <laughs> So 
So good field position for the Bills as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Here's Allen to throw it. Buying time to his left. And finding Emmanuel Sanders here. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. To throw, it's Allen. Sanders has it over the middle. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. Here's Allen. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Just bow. Either not, way. not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. second to go in the half as this one is away and he can't field it cleanly it's loose Come on, baby. so we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report coach okay Brandon thanks very much and welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports halftime report first though a check of the next gen stats in that first half for the colts and they were able to have a little bit of success on the ground the question will be will they stick with it or will they be throwing more to try and regain this lead meanwhile for the bills you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football and whatever they've done it's worked as they have the lead through two quarters of play all right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Just inside the 20, a short kick. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. 
The quarterback, Josh Allen, the focus of our players' spotlight. And they must have seen something leading up to this one that said, hey, we're going to be able to go deep because they've gone deep with a lot of success. And pick your phrase, pick your code words, your buzzwords, whatever, vertical stretch, deep passes, go routes, right? What's that Why? route you love? What's that oh, right? Four love? verts. Four verts. All of it working because they're able to find ways to get deep and for him to show off that big, big arm. We see some of that big arm right here. He has been great. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Coming up on second and seven. So the shotgun snap to Allen. On the left side, he finds Beasley. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. They should have gotten more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. Throwing is Allen on third. He'll go right back to Beasley. And he's going to have the Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? He hasn't had the game he expected. But that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. Nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Dave's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Singletary. And he'll get in! Touchdown, Buffalo! Devin Singletary taking it in from a yard now. And the Bulls take the opening kick off of the third quarter drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Here's Bass now for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. 
So this drive spans seven plays. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. To the touchdown bass to kick it away and this will not be returnable it's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half and their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all I think it does at least a little bit because now urgency has to start setting in you can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially but you have to do it without pressing because pressing that'll lead you into bigger errors on first and ten here's Wentz throwing middle but it's incomplete you know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. And decide to run a hitch route, it really helps have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw his wins. A rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off at the 30, and he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, last thing he said as we were walking off the field, want to play mistake-free football. Well, that just went out the window there with a pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words every time we hear that. Things tend to fall apart a little bit, and that's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. Here comes Josh Allen and the Bills offense back onto the field. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you judge mm -hmm. how big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down at four. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. First target, first catch, and a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, but he ended up with an interception in that game at Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover, and they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal.
And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Bills will add on to their lead. And boy, that was a heavy set. They had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? It was none of this show you heavy set. Don't leg it out. No, no, no. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. Bass on for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Touchdown pass to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and four. On the handoff, Taylor. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. They'll fake the give to Taylor. Now Wentz. And this will be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Second and 10. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 49 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. First downs have not come easy, and neither runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. Now Taylor. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. They'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. 
It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Now wins. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop. But when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now Wentz, got to have this one. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Bills are going to get the football back. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Been a very strong performance for them, really, on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs, the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the way out. On first down, they'll start out with Moss. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves them with five more. Third and five now. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short this late in the game, Charles. I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for him. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. On is the punter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Indy set to go on offense once more. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. To throw, it's Wentz. Oh, a strip. The ball comes out. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense gotten it, they were already within a shadow of the goalpost. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Throwing his wins. 
flush to his right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes it manageable now. Is incomplete, but the pressure there on third down, forcing the Aaron pass. Fourth down coming up. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. It's Wentz. And he'll find Pittman. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up the first down there for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jump start with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Wentz. And that is incomplete. You now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Wins to throw again. And a throw for Pittman is intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And they will set up shot in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. That interception may be the exclamation mark on what really all around has been a good performance. A fantastic performance. They will enjoy film session. Their grade should be very good on this one. And I think the next time the offense gets the ball, I just think about running it and getting the clock done and getting the heck out of here. And by the way, semantics here, but before the grammar police come after me, I think it's exclamation points, not mark, right? You're asking me? Seriously? Yeah, you're smarter than me. Everybody I, knows that. Listen, I go with what you say, my man. <laughs> They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They go right back to Singletary. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 33. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Bills on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They're up against a third and one situation. To the air, Allen. On the slant, he's got Sanders. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. What an advantage having a lead guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Singletary again. 
And they'll get him down right around the 16. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. On third down, they go with Singletary. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. But this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. His kick is good. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's a victory here for the Buffalo Bills. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.